Hello everyone, good evening there. This is Dr. Lai Shri and well known as Jaiman Shara online. Thank you so much everyone for subscribing, liking and commenting and requesting the videos that you want to study. I'm really glad to see you here everyone. Uh, my friends, if you are doing exercise regularly, so I would recommend you to follow this exercise as the part of your life which can be turning into treatment so it is very important for you to understand how exercise can be turning into a treatment so that you can uh, do the major things the little change with the little changes you can do major uh, you can bring major results in your life with your physical body all right so thank you so much once again everyone so um so far we have discussed about introduction how exercise has become treatment and how the scientists different kinds of scientists they intervened exercise into the treatment part and in part one we have seen the mechanics of movements uh, so far and now today we are going to discuss part two the principles of the exercise therapy all right so welcome again everyone let's dive into the subject so this is the synopsis here today we are going to discuss axis planes and their examples speed velocity and acceleration the movement under gravity momentum inertia and friction all right so what is the axis and a plane axis is nothing but don't get confused here again i'm saying you students this is only for your notes if you want to understand just listen to my words first and match match my words with the animation uh, which is going to play here but later once again if you read these lines then you can understand so these sentences are from the textbooks of your subject so you don't have to panic about the uh, uh, lines or sentences here all right so okay let's uh, see what is axis and plane so axis is nothing but a point which means any joint in the body it can be any joint in the body and a plane is nothing but a movement that is taking place uh, perpendicularly to this axis okay if this is axis this is a plane so movement can be happening this way if this is axis movement can be happening this is the plane where the movement is happening all right so if this is axis then movement can happen this way all right so there are three types of axis and the same names with the same names you have three di different types of planes according to which uh, look according to where it is located at all right so an axis is a line about which movement takes place and a plane is a surface which lies right angle to it which means perpendicular and in which movement takes place all right so i'm going to show you different types here with the examples so no need to worry it's just the sentences here with the same names three things transverse plane sorry transverse axis here and sagittal plane here just now i have shown you so any line which is like this which is horizontal is transverse you know that and the medical term for up and down movement is sagittal all right so anterior posterior axis so this is the point here and this is your this is your movement this is how the movement takes place and if this is your axis this is your movement so i will show you a couple of examples here so there are three types we have seen right sagittal axis uh sagittal plane and uh, transverse axis and also the another axis all right so now we are seeing this moment right this moment so i will give you one tip all right so you just have to look for the moment first how the moment is going to happen so that you can find out what is the center of the point which is occurring as axis for example if this is your plane the moment and the ankle joint must be your axis so the imaginary line happens like this here all right that is transverse axis and sagittal plane example ankle joint axis dorsiflexion and plantar flexion moment so that is one next is sagittal axis so which is what is sagittal axis here which means 
front to back all right so in children in children not in adults but in children we can see the anterior fontanelle so the, the improper formation of the skull these two bones parietal bones which are not formed yet in children which can make a partial partial movement that is called coronal plane all right coronal plane movement and sagittal axis so you got it here and another best example for this so this must be your hand and movement is happening this way and the axis must be this way so sagittal axis anterior posterior let's imagine there is a man here and this is the sagittal axis anterior posterior and the movement is like this so again you can say supination pronation movement which is in transverse plane and elbow joint as the axis all right so let's say transverse plane vertical axis which is very easy to find out all right so this man has a vertical axis and the movement should be taking place as the rotation so guys it's very simple to understand three axes three planes with the same names all right sagittal transverse vertical which is front and back vertical and horizontal vertical horizontal and anterior posterior front and back that's all so now how does it be relating to gravity all right so any movement uh, so now we have discussed it three movements right up and down side to side movement all right so if we see here in horizontal plane if you do any movement that can be gravity free because gravity cannot affect your movement when you are doing this gravity cannot affect directly but you are doing upward movement against gravity then your weak muscles have will have some potential to produce a movement and they will have some support to get the strength this is why passive movements are uh, to be done in flexion and extension and all the other movements passively but when you do it repeatedly your weak muscles are going to be strengthened all right so guys any uh, if you are if your muscle is when you are doing exercise if your muscle is weak then firstly go for elimination gravity which is called as this plane so any position yourself and uh, how to do the passive movements we will discuss that in coming videos i don't want you to miss that but now you see this is one of the example so this guy is doing as a uh, as in horizontal plane so what must be the axis here all right this must be the axis just like supination and pronation this must be the axis all right so you can see there is no gravity affecting here so that's how it is related so coming to yeah weak muscles are getting strength here and coming to the movement in the inclined plane and in the inclined plane actually the resistance will be offered to the muscles in the inclined plane so that it is going to get some more strength and uh, so the movement towards a downwards to the force of gravity the inclination approaches the vertical and the reaction of the plane decreases the magnitude of the force will be increased so if the movement is going towards the gravity all right you are going to there will be no such great effect to your body if your body is against gravity then you can see some of the force so the muscular contraction will be exceeded by the force of gravity downward movement there will be specific feed, uh, speed and also the modified and controlled muscular action will be there in the vertical plane if you are doing the exercise all right so now what is speed we know that for example there is a car here it is going in a zigzag way in a proper way 
See, so without a direction, if a car or anything is moving without direction, it is just a speed. If it is going with the direction, then it is called as velocity. All right, velocity has a direction, but speed doesn't have speed is just making a body to move. All right, it is just making a body to move and takes no account of the direction. All right, so what is speed and movements? How they are going to get uh, re going to get to be related with exercises? Let's see. All right, speed and movements. So nothing. It's very simple, guys. To understand speed and movements. For example, if you are doing uh, this movement like this. This is passive movement. So you are seeing above me that uh, speed of relaxed passive movement, active exercises, reduced, increased speed, exercises performed rapidly. All right. So I will show you all the examples there, but I want you to understand the major concept here. The speed of the relaxed passive movements can be slow and uniform. As I told you, exercise is a pattern to be done it is uh, going to be now a treatment so it has some pattern to be done and then it will show some effect in the body right so if we are doing exercise slowly this is called as passive movement all right so if i am doing by myself this is called active exercises with natural speed all right, so I can do as many as exercises. It can be varied to individual and it can be varied in any another uh, areas. So what is reduce, reduced speed? So it is just uh, to control the muscular action, the muscular effort. And you will do it for every five seconds. So that is reduced speed which means you are repeating the movement, repeating. You are doing three repetitions for uh, 20 seconds or 30 seconds or 30 minutes for five repetitions. You have that kind of protocol right in the gym or anywhere you see. It is because your muscle needs certain amount of education, which is called as re-education of the muscle. You are actually treating your muscle as a student or a training. You are training your muscle, right, with a particular speed. That is the reason you need to know about your speed when you are doing some movement. So when you are doing rapid movements, then it is uh, going to increase the range of movement. So if I'm doing this rapidly, then it will it can lose my joint here so it has to be done in a particular amount of speed so exercise can be performed more rapidly but it can make you more inaccurate or trick movement so if you are do, lifting up something and doing it irregularly or rapidly or however you want to do but then you are going to affect your body with trick movements that is called as trick movements so full range of motion is uh, rarely achieved here okay so here uh, this guy is doing various kinds of exercises but you see him you see him there are his speed is low here he is doing with some weights here actively he is doing something here all right he is doing jumping here minute a rapid exercise all right so for everything there is a pattern here you need to know what pattern you are doing with how much speed you are doing how many repetitions you are doing is it really necessary with those repetitions your muscle need first of all check your muscle how weak it is or a strong one you have all right so let's go to velocity as i told you before velocity is nothing but a range of motion but also has the direction all right it is the motion range from here to here it's going but it has a direction it is going in this direction all right so what is acceleration that change of velocity if it is changing the direction to one place to another then it is called as acceleration which means if it is slowing the direction then it is deceleration but if it is increasing the direction with the speed then it is acceleration all right you know the accelerator meaning so you are just initiating the movement or you know particular direction in which direction you are going 
so moment under the gravity i'll talk about this in a moment so what is moment under the gravity all right so this is about a velocity just a basic uh, knowledge uh, because your body is going to work so moment under gravity galileo the person you know the scientist right so he has understood when he went to uh, that leaning tower of pisa then he understood the heavier bodies from leaning tower of pisa if they fall also doesn't have that much of impact with the weight that carries so if it has some weight if it is falling from the higher places even though it is falling from higher places with different kinds of weights it doesn't matter but with the same uniform acceleration it can move with the more major heights not the smaller heights so momentum what is momentum the volume the volume of the motion how, with how much volume the quantity of the motion it is carrying that is called the momentum all right so let us see here about the moment and the gravity i have told you if anything is falling from the very very highest places then it is going to show no impact with the weight so we think that heavy weights will uh, move very heavy weights will move very slowly and the lighter weights will go faster but with the highest places the acceleration cannot change the direction won't change with the weight it just falls down so next here goes inertia what is inertia i'll give you very very simple example you saw this train here right so it needs some starting so anything any vehicle to start it needs some action to start so when you start your car or a bike or anything you have something to start with which is called as engine so you are actually initiating one energy to move that is called as inertia so inertia is the resistance of a body which can change the state of rest of a motion so if it is a resting motion but it has some resistance to move it gives sudden breaks to start it kind of thing so you just have to notice that it is called inertia all right so it has some proper direction until something stops it like sudden break it won't stop okay so it has to start by force and it has to stop by force which is called as inertia i will give you a simple tip to uh, understand it inertia is nothing but initiating a movement which is causing already some resistance so for example muscles if you take muscles weak muscles cannot have sufficient force to overcome inertia so in order to do this movement if i'm doing it very hard this weak muscles are not supporting for me to bend so it needs some inertia which means some support to do the movement for here all right so that's how you describe inertia in the body in the with the muscle and joints so coming to yeah this is inertia and about the muscles coming to friction friction is nothing but you see here you know what friction is there are two objects or uh, two things are colliding each other that uh, by force but no motion that is static friction so if you are pushing something but still there is no movement here it is just uh, rubbing the ground and it's not moving that is static friction sliding friction it is just sliding very smoothly when you apply some force that is called sliding friction but rolling friction when it is happening in a rolling motion so you you have actually two things in friction which is static and dynamic friction is the force which opposes motion when one surface slides upon another it may be sufficient to prevent movement altogether okay so you are going to uh, what, what do we uh, understand by these principles actually so in your body every day there is some friction in the joints if your joints are cracking it means there is some friction which will help in your diagnosis when a person is complaining friction there is no free movement in the joint then you are going to do mobilization right so it it catches your diagnosis so this is the reason why we are learning the basic 
principles of moments so inertia again there is no uh, power in the muscles to start where where to start actually then you you are going to understand about the inertia there so again uh, how how i i get benefited by learning this uh, velocity speed acceleration the movement of this joint with the particular amount of speed velocity and acceleration by that you can understand since how long the patient is suffering from a joint pain or a muscle pain or a muscle catch or anything like that so this is the reason the basics are very important to understand in which plane it is got stuck if there is deformity in the bone or the joint then the movement you you can have the tricky movements of any joint right so then you you can have the diagnosis properly by understanding how you are uh, by understanding the basic principles of the movement so so these are the things guys i really appreciate you uh, by being here so this is the friction i have shown you a couple of examples here so thank you so much thank you again for joining with me i really appreciate you guys uh, today we have successfully finished our part two with the mechanics of movement and again in the coming video we are going to end the principles of exercise therapy with part three in which we will be discussing the leverage system which is very important question i know for uh, the doctors out there so the liver system in the body and the pulley system and the pendulum system i don't want you to miss that you have to understand that very important questions even in the future of your clinical practice so everyone who are watching this i really appreciate you guys and i thank you everyone thank you so much for supporting you're welcome for the next video